Hello, friends, and welcome back to King's Quest 3. We are captured. We are in servitude once more. How will we escape this time? All right. I'm coming back to a playthrough, so let me get my bearings. We're going to look. You are in the dank cargo hold of the pirate ship. With caution, you look around the dim surroundings. Mostly, you see stacks of wooden crates. Looking upward, you notice a rope ladder dangling partway through an opening in the hold ceiling. The ladder is directly above the largest crate. Look, crate. You notice many crates and boxes in the cargo hold. One in particular captures your attention, for it lies directly under the dangling rope ladder. Look, large crate. All right. That's what we have here. What? I have to go behind the pillar. You look wearily around the dark, dank cargo hold. There seems to be nothing but stacks of wooden crates piled around. Our mice friends seem to have disappeared, too. Let's look at them. A couple of little gray mice scurry to and fro on the floor of the hold. Let's see what I have here. Ah, yes. They've, took, they've taken everything. I just have the dough in my ears. Of course, I heard their previous conversation. They're worried about a cat coming on board. Let's see if I can get more information. The little mice totally ignore your attempted conversation. What do you think the pirates will do with the boy they shanghaied? A little gray mouse squeaks to a companion. They'll probably make him a cabin boy, answered the other mouse. What happened to the last cabin boy they had? Didn't you hear? They fed him to the sharks just for sport. Oh my. Fed to the sharks. Not I, surely. Gwydion is too handsome. Too princely. Too hungry for adventure to be eaten by sharks. But that was something a little different. Maybe the mice can tell me more. Do you know where the pirates are taking us? One gray mouse asks the other. I heard them talking about a buried treasure chest, the other mouse answers. I think it's buried on a beach, and they're going to dig it up. Oh, I remember, squeaks the first mouse. Remember when they first buried the treasure? It was on a small beach, and behind the beach was a high mountain range. I remember hearing one pirate say that nobody has ever crossed those mountains alive. Hmm. Treasure, you say? Maybe they can be a bit more specific. Mice. I am also interested in this treasure. For I am just a poor shanghai boy. You know the pirate's buried treasure? You hear one of the mice say to the other. What about it? Asks the second mouse. Says the first. Well, I just heard the captain talking about it with one of his men. He said it was buried. Now, let me see if I can remember... Oh, yeah. He said it was buried near a lone palm tree. From the palm, you walk five paces to the east and then start digging. Too bad we can't do anything about it, muses the other mouse. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I can take you fellows with me. The mice move much too quickly for you to ever catch. Ah. Maybe I'll just have to earn their trust. Take crate, this small one. Small one, surely Gwydion can move. He's been putting in long hours at the warehouse. And now he can do deadlifts like nobody's business, which comes in handy picking up heavy crates. Drop crate. Hopefully not on your toes, Gwydion. That looks very painful. Let's see. Get on box. Why don't you try jumping? Jump on box. And another jump on box. A hoppity hop, here we go. Use ladder. How can you use that which you do not have? Well, then I will take the ladder. Okay, then I will simply jump on the ladder. <gasps> Here we are, but to save the game. 
deadly pirates are up there waiting for us. We must be sneaky sneaky. Sneaky sneaky. There's the captain. You look curiously around. Out of porthole, you see the swell of the ocean. A device for turning the ship's rudder sets in the floor. A rope ladder extends up through an opening in the ceiling. Let's see if we can move a little. Oh no, one of the crew has spotted you. You better run. Oh, we'll just go back. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh yes. Retro games for the win. Out of sight, out of mind. That's how it works. See a shovel on the ground there. We'll certainly need that. You have found yourself below the lower deck. They keep the ship's lifeboat stored here. There are open doorways at either end of the compartment. There is a shovel lying by the lifeboat. Take shovel and look shovel. The shovel seems to be quite average, with an iron scoop and a long wooden handle. Look, lifeboat. You scrutinize the boat inside and out, but find it to be empty and uninteresting. Well, can't we just put ourselves in it and take off to safety? I'll save the game one more time. The captain is currently away. When cap... Caps away. Gwydion plays. What is this again? Ship's rudder. Turn rudder. What's a rudder? You tell me, game. <laughs> you tell me. Uh, let's see. Okay, this does change. This must be the captain's cabin. He seems to be a bit more tidy than his mates, as the room is clean and orderly. Against one wall rests his bunk with a large chest at its foot. Across the room is his desk, with a chart tacked to the wall. Look, desk. You gaze with interest at the captain's desk. The desktop is very neat, holding only writing implements. Curiously, you open a drawer or two. There is nothing of interest among the charts and logbooks. Quickly, you close them again. I'm looking for his diary. What dreams does a captain have? Maybe we can work and accomplish them together. We can overcome our circumstance with friendship. Or we can look at his chart. You stare at the chart tacked to the wall. It traces the route the ship is now sailing. It leaves Ludor crossing a wide ocean and arriving at the foot of a mountain range. An X has been marked at the arrival point. Ah, yes, we're going to the beach. The one with treasure. The chest at the foot of the captain's bunk is closed. Open chest. Look inside, chest. You found all your missing possessions. You take them with you. Oh, the captain scared me, and I mistyped inventory. The captain doesn't want you snooping in his quarters. You're in trouble now. I'll not tolerate you snooping around me quarters, the captain thunders. If I catch you in here again, you'll walk the plank. Adding insult to injury, all of your belongings have been taken from you again. <gasps> no. Let's just restore the game. We'll go back to when caps away, Gwydion Pla. Gwydion Pla, like a, like a Klingon. He kaplas. Uh, let's see. Look. Chart. And... Uh, open chest. Look in chest all my possessions I believe I have the shovel as well I do and well let's go ahead and save now got my stuff here we are thimble, eagle feather, magic stone Storm brew, invisibility ointment. Doing ears, fly wings, sleep powder. Sleep powder is what we'll need. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Let's see if we can go up. Yep. 
You gotta watch that step. Little bit of a doozy. This is the upper deck of the pirate ship. A ladder leads to the lower deck. The chef. Okay, that chef. Maybe he doesn't disappear. Oh, we most certainly must watch our step there. Let's try one more time. Looking down from this height makes you dizzy and you almost fall. Holding tight, you look up and notice a crow's nest at the top of the mast. Look, crow's nest. A crow's nest perches atop the mast you are climbing. Cautiously, you gaze up at it, but from this vantage point, you cannot see into it. I'm the pirate now. Let's see if we can look into this. Look, crow's nest. No! A burly pirate has noticed you from inside the crow's nest. Before you can react, he yells, You're dead meat buckle! And slashes at you with his sword. He misses, but you lose your balance. Down you tumble to your untimely death. These pirates... Don't they know we could be much happier as friends? Restore our game. We'll just go ahead and back to Got My Stuff. Because I actually remember what we're supposed to do, and it does involve the sleep powder. So I will hang out with the only people who are friendly on this ship, the mice. Now, here's the thing with this game. Um, we are sailing. Sailing to the beach with the treasure, but we actually are sailing. So, right now we're in the middle of the ocean, not much we can do here, so what we want to do is wait. We want to wait until the pirates see land, which they will, of course, notify us with a great and mighty land ho. Unfortunately, this will take some time, though, so I say we put in the action, wait. What's a wait? Well, well, we have to use it. We have it. Let us use the weight. <laughs> okay. Yes, we'll go ahead and skip the video until the pirates see the land. So, I will see you then. All right, welcome back. You hear one of the pirates shout, Land ho, Captain! Turn it back down to fast. And here, we will try to sneak off of the ship and get to the island all by ourselves. So, we are going to use that sleeping powder. We'll cast it upon the ship. Pour sleeping powder on the ground. And say, slumber henceforth. As your sleep spell takes effect, a silence suddenly descends over the ship. Not for the mice, though. They still scurry. But you know what? Maybe they're the true pirates here. They're happy here. I do not need to take them with me. They have their lives here. They don't want the treasure, honestly. Their true treasure is having each other. We shall climb up, and hopefully every single pirate will be asleep. Definitely safe here. I'm the pirate now. Good save, good save. Let us... Look at the captain. The captain is snoring peacefully in his bunk. Give captain good night kiss. He deserves it. He's been working hard. Ordering his men, capturing princes to be his cabin boy. He's had a full day. Now let's check on our chef friend. This is the galley of the pirate ship. A large iron stove dominates one wall. Pots, pans, and barrels surround it. There is a long dining table at the other end of the room. 
All right. The chef is sound asleep. Working hard on his chili. Mm, maybe... Oh, there we go. That's how you use a ladder. You do a shimmy and a shammy. The lower deck has no railing. <gasps> Be careful, Gwydion. You wouldn't want to fall off. You see nothing but ocean in every direction. That's a shark. That is definitely a shark. Totally not playing the Jaws music. Oh, almost got me. Here we are, to safety. You are on a small beach to the south of a looming mountain range. Look, shark. A prowling shark waits offshore. Ready to greet you. With a firm handshake and a how do you do. You are on a small beach to the south of a looming mountain range. Yes, so this is the beach they were mentioning. Even see the palm tree. A lone, so alone, palm tree graces this beach. But is it really that alone? For five steps, there could be treasure. Let's see, save game. Palm tree treasure. Five steps. One, two, three, four, five. Dig. Let us see what we find. You have uncovered a small chest. You remove it from the hole and open it. Inside you find precious gems and ingots of gold and silver. You close the chest and take it and its contents with you. Look, chest. The small wooden chest was buried so long that its wood is slightly warped, and its brass is tarnished and rusty. Inside are precious gems, gold and silver ingots, pearls and gold coins. My goodness gracious. From two, two different kinds of slaves to now being incredibly wealthy. We certainly have gone a long way from our humble beginnings. Well, let us... It's always nice to look on each new screen. You are at the foot of a high snowy mountain range. A cliff looms before you with a tricky path winding its way up the steep face. Even the game says the path is tricky. Oh, I wonder if we'll be able to make it. Hopefully there's no stairs soon. Mm-hmm. Tricky path. Tricky, tricky. Well, this path seems to go just to the wall, so... Let us go here. And there's a gap here, so... Look! Wall. It's just as it appears. Okay, look cliff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then it... Oh, oh, I can just climb. Oops. Do some more shimmying. There we are. Seems to work out just fine for us. All right. This corner, though. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't want to overwrite that. We'll make a new save. Dangerous path. Oh. We're getting into the greenery now. The snow-capped mountains advance forever upward. A narrow path skims along the top of a precipitous ridge. As you look down, you see the steep cliff below you. It's just a metaphor for our adventure once again. Starting from the bottom, climbing to the top. We're just seeing... All the environments. Beach, forest, mountains, now snow? Well, let us gaze upon this screen's beauty with this small stream waterfall. The mountains continue to march forever upward as you trek higher and higher. It's getting cold and there are traces of snow. Below you stretches a beautiful valley. Okay, we shall save our game. Dangerous path. I... 
Thought there was a path behind there. There is not. Just a steep cliff. Thanks for playing King's Quest 3 next time. Be more careful. Okay. So I... I think the path has run out. No more path to be had. So... We look... Eagle... Oh, oh, yes. Dip. Whoops. <laughs> that was my butterfingers. Okay, so we've already done this before with the spider. Dip. Eagle feather in essence. We saw through the sky. If we can find where to go. Yes, we go up. That is what we do. Shh, you're flying. <laughs> no time to look. What is this thing? Oh no, it's the abominable snowman. Snowman, I am eagle. Do not fear me. I do not mean to infringe on your home. I just wish to share in its beauty. Let's see, maybe we can just go... The abominable snowman seems quite confused by this. He stares in amazement, then heads back to his cave. Yes, do not worry, for I am eagle friend, and eagle friend is no threat. Okay, um... Don't remember how to... Stop... Being an eagle... What's a being? Okay, well, let's just head. The urge to fly and soar has left, so you head for what you hope is a safe place to land. Okay, we just had to head down that screen. You have made the very top of the snowy mountain range. The snow path ends here at a cliff. Far in the distance, you can see a vast green valley. Could it be Daventry, you wonder? Your excitement mounts. All right, we'll save it here. Uh, Yeti spaghetti. Just to check it out. Go back here. See what's up. You have reached the summit, but still the snowy mounds continue relentlessly forward. What is this? A cave with a snowy path leading to it? Hmm. What could it all mean? The snowy cave is very large, with thick icicles hanging from its entrance. It's very dark inside. But maybe we can check it out. What could we be missing if we just went past this- <gasps> Yeti friend, I am here! You are not alone! The, ter the terrible- No, 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 no. The handsome, kind, hairy creature grabs you with very strong, huggable hands. And the, <laughs> the lovely creature grabs you gently around the neck and- you both go out for ice cream. Suffice to say, it was a beautiful day. Ah, what a what a pleasant alternate ending we just found. Yeti spaghetti, here we go. Bravely, you grasp the ice-laden rocks and attempt to scale the nearly vertical wall. Be careful, Gwydion. You congratulate yourself on successfully eluding the abominable snowman. Ah, yes. Congratulations, indeed. Okay. Hmm, make one more save. Cave maze. Cause this is looking pretty maze-like. Let, let's see what happens here. Boy, are these caves dark. Hmm. Hopefully it will spit me- Whoop! <laughs> it definitely did spit me out. That is what it did. Uh, yes. Uh, look. This is a very steep and dangerous cliff. Numerous caves honeycomb its face. You could get lost in the caves if you survive the cliff. Yes, if I survive, that that is a, a key component here. Now I am ready. Whoa, didn't expect that one. Hmm. 
Why did that wall deny me? How could it be so slippery? Hmm. Let's save here. Same save, that's fine. Maybe I get a little closer, maybe. Okay, this seems to be working. Hmm. I can go up, I can go down. Let's try down. Okay, I can't go right. Okay. Into the cave and see where we go. Then we'll climb up. This seems to be working just fine. Only one cave left. Here we are. Um, just there. There we go. I understand your World King's Quest 3. I have conquered your world. I don't think we'll need to go back there. Instead, let us go right here, the middle of the screen, and gaze upon the world. You carefully make your way down the eastern side of these mountains. The path travels along the top of a narrow ridge. Looking back, you see the snowy peaks through which you so recently journeyed. Whew! You wipe your brow as you feel the worst is now behind you. The worst, you say? I don't know. I feel like this game could be having a climax. After all, we were promised to save a damsel in distress from something most dangerous indeed. You carefully make your way down the eastern side of these mountains. The path travels along the top of a narrow ridge. Looking back, all right, that's all the same. Even though, of course, I enjoy reading it. Whoops, you slipped. Well, I know usually with that shake head sound effect, this was meant to be, and I am alive. Well, this is looking a bit familiar. You look upward and view the mountain range you so arduously crossed. Well, you made it to Daventry, but what is this? It looks like a cave leading deep into the mountain. You see evidence that a door once covered this cave entrance. Huge boulders lie scattered about, apparently from tumbling down the mountain. Yes, this is Daventry. We've seen this in King's Quest 1. This led to the, uh, the place in the clouds where the giant was. The lazy giant who just fell asleep. And here's the well. The well led down to the dragon. Could it be the same dragon? You stare at the run-down shack. Upon the porch, a withered gnome rocks in a creaky old rocking chair, whistling a merry tune. The shack leans heavily to one side, and you wonder why it doesn't fall. Look, shack. Mm hmm Look. Mm -hmm. Gnome. This gnome looks to be at least a hundred years old. He stooped with age, and his face is as withered as an old prune. Gray, wispy hair tops his head, and gnarled hands clutch the chair. As old as he looks, however, his twinkling eyes suggest a youthful mischievousness as he whistles a merry tune. Let us make a new friend. Talk gnome. You speak directly to the old gnome. He chuckles softly to himself, then replies, It's about time you got here, lad. I mean, Prince Alexander, welcome home. Heaven knows we need you. Daventry's been suffering for years now since that despicable dragon came. The old gnome narrows his eyes to slits and leans forward in his chair. That monster demanded the sacrifice of your poor sister, Princess Rosella, and I'm afraid time is running out. Your parents, the king and queen, are suffering such grief they have locked themselves in, the, in yon castle and refuse to see anyone. Staring intently at you, the gnome goes on. It's up to you, Alexander. Your country and family need you. It's written in the wind. The wizened gnome relaxes and settles back in his chair. He begins whistling again. The castle is over yonder. We'll speak with my parents and we'll make a plan. Oh my gosh. What happened to this castle? You gaze sadly at the deteriorated castle. 
It's obvious that it was once proud and beautiful, but now its banners are torn, its stones and statue work crumbling, and the moat has been drained. It's as if no one cares anymore. We don't even have the alligators. Where do they go? Carl, Frank, please, come back. Look, uh, castle. Look, banners. Sadly, the torn banners of the shabby castle are flying at half-mast. Oh, poor Daventry. Stricken with remorse and sadness. Look, lions. Look, statues. Hmm. Well, let us try to step inside. The huge doors of the castle are bolted shut. Try as you might, you cannot open them. This land was... So rich with adventure and opportunity, and now it is sad and dismal. But we can help. We are Prince Alexander, and we are back home. We must save Rosella. The countryside of Daventry looks as if it had once been beautiful, but now trees are charred. A chasm splits the earth, and wildflowers no longer grow. Nearby is an old, broken-down well that someone has filled with rocks. It's useless now. Everything burned, burned to a crisp. This dragon has done more than take our Rosella. He has destroyed Daventry. But we can rebuild. But first, I must save a life. For I have saved my own, and now I must save my sisters. What? What? There we are. Oh, yes, stairs. What's a Sierra game without stare? <laughs> the very first step. The very- it, it's a dilly- a dilly! <laughs> Never heard that, but I believe it. I believe it. You know, I was doing pretty well in this Let's Play. All these deaths, they're coming at the end. Just as a, any game should, I suppose. The, ch the challenge ramps up at the end. But we can do this. We've done it before. Quite literally, in fact. Look at this. This looks exactly the same as King's Quest 1. That's a cute little tie-in. The world doesn't need to change, though the game has changed. It's meant to be familiar. King Graham had an adventure, and now his son, Prince Alexander, who I suppose is not named Gwydion, will have an adventure. We have learned our true name, and now we will reach our true goal. It feels strangely hot up here. Yes, yes, we're in the clouds. We've been here. Looking around, you see clouds surrounding this small bit of land like a white cottony sea. Charred stumps of trees spoil the scene. Is the giant still here? Holy moly, a huge fire-breathing dragon is here and it has seen you. Hypnotized by its baleful glare, you stand frozen in your tracks. What a way to go, ending up as a dragon's barbecue. Texas style. Well, I don't know about that, that's just, that's just charcoal and ash. <laughs> what a poor barbecue. <laughs> but that dragon, it looks so cool. Whoa. His head's going nuts there. <laughs> the middle dragon is so very excited about this uh, charred barbecue they, they just made. It's <laughs> he's going crazy. He's he's doing his best owl impression. Restore game. Well, you know what? I didn't even look at Rosella. Rose. Oh, Rosella giving me the look like this is the hero. <laughs> uh, I thought he was gonna save me, but now he's just a pile of ash. Okay. Restore game. Halfway through the stairs. That's fine. For if I am to conquer a three-headed dragon, I have to master the stairs first. It just makes complete sense. Especially for Sierra games. Sierra games have a... 
have what they call moon logic, where some puzzles' answers just absolutely make no sense at all. So in a way, anything can make sense in the Sierra game. Dragon time. Okay. Inventory. See what we have here. Visibility ointment. It seems like the winner here, because immediately the dragon saw us. Hmm. Okay. Use... Invisibility ointment. How can you use that which you do not have? Uh, I have it. Use ointment. Uh -huh. Use ointment on self. Use ointment. Or not use. Rub ointment on self. Okay, there we go. And now I look like I've been printed on a printer that is running out of ink. Perfect. Oh, there he is. The dragon has laid waste to this area. The earth is scorched and all the trees and plants are charred. Look, dragon. The dragon's green scaly body is huge. Its three ugly heads blow flame and smoke while its necks twist and writhe. Oh, the sight of it makes you shiver. Look, woman. The girl is securely tied to the stake. Well, what if we say, Rosella? Okay. Um, well, as with all the things in King's Quest, we must kiss dragon. For love will only be the thing that solves our problems and saves our damsel in distress from an evil dragon. Or, or, bear with me, we could use the storm brew. That also might work, just as powerful as a kiss. Stir storm brew with finger. Okay. Brew of storms. Churn it up. The poor dragon, being bazapped, bolts of lightning strike the huge dragon. He howls in pain and falls to the ground, asleep. Just asleep. Just tired from his day. Your magic spell is wearing off. That is fine. That is fine. Let us look at the dragon. The dragon lies asleep upon the ground. He was no match for the fury of your magical storm. And kisses. We will let the dragon sleep, for we know with a good night's rest, he won't be so angry next time. Untie. Or, yeah, untie princess. You rapidly untie Princess Rosella from the wooden pole. She looks bewildered as to who her benefactor may be. I'm your long-lost brother, Prince Alexander, you proudly exclaim. The girl looks doubtful. I'll explain it all later, you continue, realizing that now is not the time for this. Just follow me. Let's go meet the folks. With mixed emotions, the girl agrees to follow you. Talk. Rosella. Oh, a nice little... little tune to go here. Bashfully, you introduce yourself to your long-lost sister. How can I be sure you're really my brother? Princess Rosella wonders. I know. My mother always said that Alexander had a cute birthmark on his bottom. Uh, all right. This is a weird way to introduce ourselves. Uh, let me see if you have it. Embarrassed, you reveal your cute birthmark. Oh, Alexander, she cries. <laughs> you really are back. Uh, Mom and Dad will be so happy. Okay, Rosella. I didn't think I'd be showing you my hiney. Or my cute birthmark, which, let's face it, does look like a rabbit. But that was for me to know. You... You- I'm embarrassed. I'm, em I'm embarrassed. Let's see. Oh my gosh. Rosella! 
<laughs> okay, I guess we have a uh, buoyant, boobly, bouncy princess. <laughs> Let's see. There was a beanstalk over here in the first game. You have skillfully detected the boundaries of Cloudland. The rest of your quest will go quickly. Downward. Ah, there's no beanstalk this time. So let us buoyantly go this way. Rosella, they certainly had an image for you for this game. <laughs> and it is a different image than they will have in the next game. For, and I hate to say spoiler alert, but we will not be playing as King Graham or Prince Alexander in the next King's Quest. We will have a new hero. When I first played King's Quest 4, I was so excited about that. I, oh, oh, Rosella. Please, 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 Rosella, I need to, I need to move. Okay, let's try, try this. Uh, Rosella. Oh, Rosella, please move. Uh, these stairs are dangerous. Oh my gosh. These, st these stairs are so dangerous. <laughs> Rosella, please. <laughs> All I was doing was building up King's Quest 4. Just making sure the audience is well prepared, for I'm a big fan of King's Quest 4. Oh, oh, Rosella. I just, I just, I just need, need to sneak. Sneak, sneak, sneak by. Do I not go down this way? Do... Rosella, please. I can't even... <laughs> Rosella! Are you the true final boss, Rosella? <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? No fair taking shortcuts. Ah. Okay. Okay. Rosella... We will try this again. I know you're excited to go home. I know you just want to jump right in front of me, even on deadly Sierra stairs. I understand I do. But please, I must guide the way. Let us save our game. Um, Zella, the true final boss. Uh, yeah, no, you can you can chill out back there. You you can leave me. Le there we go. There we go. It just worked this time, or maybe it's because I was going down instead of right. I don't know. I was thinking that. What? Save game. Save. Yes, 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 yes. Now hopefully this works. It. Oh, it didn't. Oh, it didn't. Yeah, I have to like. I have, to, I have to be moving down. I can't be moving left or right. That is what I'm learning here. So, save game. As much as you think I'm joking, I'm not joking when it comes to Sierra stairs. I, I'm really not. Okay. I believe this is the exit. Just have to make it. Zella, you are going crazy on those stairs. You, oh my gosh, you even prevent me from... <laughs> Zella, please. Oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> I wonder if anybody else has had this problem. Let me know in the comments if you've ever had this problem because... She's... <laughs> she doesn't want to go home for some reason. All right. I hope this gnome doesn't ask to see my birthmark too, because he he took me at my word. Well, well, heck, he's the one who told me I was the prince. Maybe he did see my birthmark. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with this birthmark. 
Oh, yippee, you did it. Your Majesty, the gnome squeals in delight. I knew you could save us all. King Graham and Queen Valenice will be overjoyed to see you too. He claps his gnarled hands. I must run ahead to announce your arrival. The gnome spryly scampers toward the castle. There he goes. What a spry old man. He's just so excited. Daventry can be restored. The castle doors are wide open to welcome home a long-missing son and a much-loved daughter. Atop the castle, the banners proudly wave. The heavy feeling of oppression is gone. Hope has at last returned to Daventry. Yes, we are not at half-mass anymore. Uh, we are. It is cutscene time. Ah, oh, everything looks the same. Except Queen Valenice. Nervously into the throne room with your sister, Princess Rosella. I gotta say, Queen Valenice, she's... We're going back to those King Quest 1, uh, Lady E.T. Atari E.T. head vibes, I gotta say. <laughs> Before the twin thrones stand your parents, King Graham and Queen Valenice. Oh yes, we tacked on another throne. It's nice for the queen. Graham and Valenice are overjoyed to see you. Alexander, where have you been all these years? Your mother exclaims. Adds your father, I'm so proud of both of you. A happy family reunited. It's beautiful. King Graham and Valenice have been ruling for quite some time. The children have grown. They're having adventures themselves. What a joyous family reunion. You're at home at last. King Graham points to the mirror. That was once a magic mirror, son, he says sadly, but it has been clouded ever since the night you disappeared from your cradle. Behold, the mirror is restored. Before your astonished eyes, the magic mirror clears and shines anew with brilliant clarity. Queen Valenice cries in delight. The terrible dragon is dead. Our children are home and the future looks bright for us all. Oh, yes. What happy circumstances for everybody! Happiness all around! King Graham lovingly retrieves his adventurer's hat with the red feather. With emotion, he tells you, Alexander, Rosella, this old hat and I have been through a lot together. Now it's time he had a new traveling companion. He flings it in your direction. Up and up it gently arcs. You raise your arms to catch it, and so does Princess Rosella. <gasps> Down it comes, nearer and nearer. Who will catch the adventurer's cap? The end. What a cliffhanger. Who will go on to continue the journey? Well. <laughs> what a freeze frame. It's like the ending of a sitcom. Congratulations on your successful completion of King's Quest 3. We hope you have enjoyed playing as much as we enjoyed creating it for you. May the, uh, may the adventuring continue with King's Quest 4. Oh, it will. It shall. Well, like I said, King's Quest 4 is one of my favorite King's Quest games. So I'm excited to play it. And I hope you will watch it and accompany me. I'll see you all then.